What, what up? up? Today we are flying out to Brooksville, which is just north of Tampa. Nick's coming along with me because we work at the same company. We thought it'd be a brilliant idea to actually talk what it's like to work at a startup. For sure. So we have flown over to Brooksville. Am I even in the shot? Yeah, you're in the shot. Get the camera over. Oh, true. Oh, true. All right, so we're over in Brooksville, the uh, pilot's lounge right now. We just grabbed some food at one of the best places in Brooksville. Have you ever been to Brooksville? There's not a lot of food out here. No. <laughs> I promise we're going to talk about the startup life, what we've experienced so far, and then why we wanted to be part of a startup. Uh, wow. Nick's got some experience doing that. To be honest, this is my first real startup outside of investing in real estate. When I was in my second year of college, I started a company for about eight months with a friend from high school. So we did a 50-50 partnership and ran that for eight months, donated to Honduras, donated stuff to a soup kitchen in New York City. Then year after that, joined a tech startup in the restaurant industry. Was in that again for about nine months, had three other founders. I kind of came in to do some marketing stuff with them, did a pitch competition, won $10,000. And then once I graduated, I started as a digital marketing manager for a luxury skincare company called Oil. They're in stuff like Saks Fifth Avenue online and all that great stuff. And then eventually I joined Mend, the current company that both of us are at, which is a med tech company. I actually don't have as much startup experience as Nick here. I've invested in real estate. I put a little money into Mend. I originally decided when I left the medical company I worked at for, for so long that I thought I should diversify. Invest in a company and go find another startup. It was a bad idea. I should have put essentially all my eggs in one basket, get there, grow the sales team, help grow sales. And it just took me about a year to figure out that that was probably what I needed to do. And so here we are today. We wanted to share why I think we joined a startup. Yeah. What, what has motivated us to join a startup? I'll start on that piece. And then what we've learned so far. One of the big pieces for me to actually join a startup and why I want to do it is that one day I want to start my own company. I want to have my own source of income, kind of like the real estate. And the thing is, is that the best way to do this, and Gary Vee talks about this all the time, is to get in and actually do it, to actually see what it's like. This is our masters, essentially. This is our masters in college. A lot of people pay for this. We're essentially paying in time and, and hard work. Right. And the other piece is that if you look at anybody that's a high level executive, CEO, COO, anybody that's a VP of sales, nine times out of 10, a lot of the experience comes from <laughs> sales and being able to touch different pieces in a startup. And that's that's reason number two for me. So essentially, I want to start my own thing, want to get the experience. And number two, if you, you take a look at a lot of people that are in high level executive positions, they've had some kind of experience building up a company on the sales side. What you got? So the reason why I joined a startup? Yeah. Um, so I have always wanted to go more of the entrepreneurial route, the idea of sitting in a corporate culture um, all day for 20, 30 years of my life to retire with a savings account sounded miserable to me. So that's why I started my own thing and then joined a couple other companies that were startups and then eventually joined Mend. Each startup I've joined has kind of gradually grown in the legitimacy of the startup, not only from an organizational standpoint, but revenue, the growth potential of the company. So now I just joined Mend because where I am in life of 21, knowing I want to start my own company someday, that I've joined a company where the founders have been super successful in their past. I'm joining a team with a lot of experience, um, growing companies, a lot of experience in the industry that I want to be in. And so for me, it's a big step in the learning process where Josh had mentioned, you know, it's like some people go to masters to get that additional couple years of experience where now I'm actually jumping into healthcare sales at 21, getting the experience, being able, you know, conversations with the CEO, the CTO every single day. A startup gives you a really unique dynamic experience um, that you're just not going to get a lot of places. That's actually a perfect segue into what we've learned. I say what I've learned, but really I think Nick and I are on the same page here. The very first thing I think would be unbelievably apparent at a startup, anybody who's actually got to experience this, is communication. Yeah. 
Nick just mentioned talking to the CEO, the, the executive level people. It's a lot more than just that for a startup. I think communication is so key in the startup life and what I've seen because there's a small group of 30 to 40 to 50 people. You've got to be one hyper transparent. You got to, there's nothing that's going to be held personally. We have to talk and be honest with each other. And number two, you have to be able to communicate what's actually working and what's not working. Because if you don't, then you're going to be, I mean, what's the simple way to say it? Stuck in a rut, not going in the direction you want to actually get done. You have a bunch of people hitting their head against a wall that we're not trying to do that. We're trying to go in the same direction. And the only way to make sure that happens is by communicating what's actually going on from the sales side, from the operational side, from the client success side. What do you think? Yeah, and I, I'm big on the corporate versus startup or small company lifestyle in a business. If, if you're in a corporate company and you don't communicate, then you might not be communicating about something on your team, maybe some project, but in a large company, your your role is your role. You're wearing one hat. The past companies I've been at where you're wearing five different hats, if you're not properly communicating something, it could be marketing, sales, product management, where the rest of the team doesn't know what's going on, and that really makes the impact of the communication exponential relative to if you were just in your role only impacted that and that's where in the companies that I've been at is it's going back to being super transparent about what's going on and especially with your team making sure everybody's comfortable talking with each other it is huge if communication lacks in a startup and something goes wrong and it has financial consequences that can, you know, make or break a startup. That's beautiful. I, I still keep staring at how relaxed you look. You're like so fucking chill. <laughs> I'm over here like on the edge of this thing. It just, there's so much space between us. <laughs> so Nick brings up a really good point and you, you might have missed it, but he had said the 17 hats. He, he slid that in there really quick, but that's a really good point. And what I think we both learned as well is that 17 hats? What you wear different 17 different hats. Oh, I didn't say 17, but yeah, startup, you wear a lot I, of different hats for a company. Oh, I you actually put a, keeper, I put a number two. Roles. <laughs> yeah, so you wear a lot of different hats at a startup, and that ties to the overall grind. This is not a corporate job. You are putting in extra hours. I think anybody that's been in sales knows that, but this is this is a whole different level because during the day you might be a salesperson, and at the end of the night you're actually operations and project management. You wear a lot of different hats, and you need to be able to adjust and adapt to that and be ready for it too. I think a lot of people talk like they want to do a startup and then when they actually get in there and realize that you have to do administrative work or project management or operations on top of what your official job title is, it, it kind of it breaks you. That's definitely one thing that, that I've learned is that you pick up a lot of different stuff and you need to either accept it and move on and push forward with the rest of the company or get out and go get a nine to five. And, and that, that segues into something I think would be really good to talk about in a video like this, you know, is the startup life right for you? But as he mentioned, if you're joining a startup, don't expect to work nine to five. One, because your workload is going to be a lot more than that. Um, or two, they'll find someone to replace you who is willing to work more than nine to five. This past Monday, I was on my laptop at 8 a.m., worked for 10 hours, went to work out for two hours, hopped back on my laptop for two more hours, and Went to bed at 10.30 after working 12 hours for the day. And it's not like in a startup you're forced to, it's you're wearing different hats, but you're also not one of 500 people at a company. So you can really feel your purpose in a startup. And that's another reason that I love startups is in a startup, your role is so much more crucial where you do feel more fulfilled from what you're doing. So if you are looking to be a part of something that's truly going to grow, you have a passion for what the business is going to help you're willing to work more than that nine to five or you know maybe like Josh and I you're a bit younger and you want to build your career path in a different way or Links for fitness in yeah, the same age group. <laughs> there. or if you know you want to do your own company one day joining a startup is a great place to begin I don't remember if it was Einstein or who the hell said it but only a fool learns from their own mistakes and joining a startup as an employee is a great way to see how things are running a startup, what to do, what not to do. So that way when you go start your own company, you've already learned from the experience you have. It's so good. I'm not going to say segue again because we said segue a couple times, but essentially moves into the next piece here. And that is the ability to adapt and be 
hyper open to new ideas. And I think that's super important because not only are you in a group of people that are ambitious, type A personality, and want to get this company moving in the right direction, but everyone's pretty opinionated. And so at the end of the day, you need to be able to say, you know what, just because I've been in sales for 10 years, doesn't mean that the person that has never experienced sales or never done operations can't provide some really good insight as an outsider's point of view and actually change the process for the better. That is really important for the person, experienced or not experienced, to be open to uh, criticism and adjusting the process because again, we're all moving in the same direction, but if you can't adapt and take any kind of feedback and make it better just because you're the most experienced person, you're gonna have a serious issue with number one, expanding the company, and two, it's funny, back to the communication piece. The the adaptability part is big because, you know, in a corporate company again, going, going back this route, and the big companies that have been around, whether it's 10 years or 100 years, or they have processes in place, they know what is successful, they can track all of that data. In a startup, if you think you have a proper process in place, your sample size for proving the legitimacy of that process is really small. And that, that's where A-B testing in, in different rate ways can really prove advantageous for the long term. Because if you start out in a startup doing things one way and you never try anything else, then you're never gonna know how it could have gone. So that's all we got today to talk about startup and what we have thought so far in being part of a startup that's grown 260% in the last year, which has been great to be part of it. If you guys like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to more content like this, you know where to find the subscription button. Nick's got his own YouTube channel as well, so I'm going to throw that in the description because he's got some pretty sweet content. I'm reading 52 books in 52 weeks for 2019. i um, doing book reviews on all of them. A little behind right now, but anything from Sell It Like Sirhan, Michelle Obama, Never Split the Difference, anything from Mindset, Biographies, Business, Stuff, and all that, so check out my channel. So that's it, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace out. Adios.